Alright ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing today on this Tuesday, April the 20th, 2021? I want to thank you for joining me here tonight for another Metallic episode of Music of Destruction, bringing you the best in metal related content right here on YouTube. We just passed 800 subscribers. I want to say thank you very much to each and every one of you for your continued support, for subscribing and watching the content. Welcome to the hardest working metal channel on YouTube and this is the only metal channel you're ever going to need. If you guys missed anything in the past couple weeks, click the eye in the upper right corner of the screen, get caught up on all my latest videos. I did take a break. I was starting to get a bit of creator burnout and I don't want that to happen. So you guys are going to see me take breaks here and there, but I will never disappear completely. I only disappeared for a week, but if you want me to review anything, make uh, suggestions in the comment section below. No slam, deathcore, metalcore, or modern tech death. Now, I've had a number of you ask me to review these genres even though I make it clear that I don't fucking like them and I never will so stop asking because it gets really goddamn annoying. Alright so welcome to Album Review Tuesdays here on the channel once again and tonight we are having a look at an absolute war metal classic deep in the underground with Archgoat, Whore of Bethlehem. And I just got this album in the mail uh, this um, last Friday, and uh, this is going to be a great review because I really love Archgoat. I'm also going to be reviewing Proclamation's Advent of the Black Omen, and I'm going to be ordering some Bestial Warlust and stuff like that, so look forward to that. Uh, this is a pretty underground band that hails from Finland, and they formed in 1989, but did not have a major debut release until 2006. Now, they did have some demos and things like that leading up to this point, Arch Goat was formed under the wings of hell in 1989 to spread the word of the Rebel Angel. The lineup consisted of Angel Slayer, Growls of the Full Moon, Ritual Butcher, Acts of Black Mass, and Blood Desecrator Bombardment. Now those are all fancy names for bass, guitar, and drums, of course. First demo was unleashed in 1991 being called Jesus Spawn, and in 1992 an unholy alliance was forged between Archgoat and Necropolis Records, and in 1993, a mini-LP, Angel Cunt, Tales of Desecration, was released. Now, Archgoat entered the studio to record a full-length release in 1993 for Necropolis Records after disagreement with the terms. However, the material was kept from the masses, and in late 1993, Archgoat decided to vanish from now this, the commercial black metal scene. So, I mean, they disappeared for a while. Now, the once so bright black flame was buried till 2004 when the horns raised again to continue the Black Crusade, and the year of 2004 saw the release of 1993's recorded material in the form of Angel Slaying Black Fucking Metal, which was a 7 inch EP through Hammer of Hate Records. Now, the lineup was original with the exception of Blood Desecrator, was replaced with Lenneth the Unholy Carnager as a session drummer at the time with the first live black mass in over a decade was performed in Kuvula, Finland on January 7th of 2005. Now having done his services in the ranks, Lenneth was replaced with the permanent drummer Sinister K, of course. Now the lineup on Whore of Bethlehem, however, is as follows. We have Lord Angel Slayer on bass and vocals. Ritual Butcherer guitars and Sinist Terror handling the drum duty. So now that you guys have a biography on Archgoat, let's get into the review. Now the album opens up with invocation and some dark ominous ambience and a demonic voice obviously is speaking in a demonic language which signifies some kind of dark occult ritual being performed. Then it shifts into another portion of dark ambience with a church bell tolling in the background every few seconds as it leads up and builds into the next track called Angel of Sodomy. Now this one begins with an extremely dark sinister riffing and some primitive blast beat drumming with some of the best production I've heard. And of course when I say best production I'm talking about raw and primal the way black metal should be as it was always intended to sound. I will never understand the appeal of commercial music. Now I do enjoy some bigger bands and definitely believe that they do have some artistic merit. It is in my opinion, however, that the most honest music has always come from the underground and Archgoat are of no exception to this rule. Now this is definitely some of the best underground black death metal or war metal, if you prefer, to have ever come out of Finland. This is some dark, hateful music, but also ritualistic and evil because of its overall intention and the emotions and visions that this music invokes over the album's 35 minute duration. Vocally, it's also what you would expect from a war metal album. Now, the vocals are low and demonic, but not guttural 
to the point of indecipherability. This is growling, low vocals done right in my opinion, and what makes the album really stand out is the sense of foreboding evil that accompanies the journey, but also the sense of melodicism that comes in at just the right times with doom-like repetition and some very dark, creepy, atmospheric guitar work where everything slows down from the chaotic blasting and you just get some really rock and roll induced black metal that has a really ice cold atmosphere and sinister atmosphere to it that is really awesome and you'll hear it throughout the album when you listen to it you'll know what i'm talking about great opening track next up we have lord of the void and while the album's arrangements and structuring all follows a similar pattern the riffing drum and bass all combine to give a sense of impending doom and dark demise of existence it's icy it's cold it's misanthropic and fucking evil and certainly not considered with commercial success or mass appeal but for those of us who understand this kind of expression and atmosphere it's perfectly fine that an album maintains this hypnotic and oftentimes unvaried approach and music itself within its framework and i find it pleasing that every once in a while there are bands that come along that ir irrevocably change the landscape of music for years to come now while i personally feel that Arch Goat are among these bands that I'm talking about. What we have here is something that some people will find deplorable and boring, and that's just fine. While others like myself find it moving, complex, atmospheric, dark, and just fucking amazing, as it connects with us because it's exactly what we're looking for in our art. This is another excellent track. Next up, we have another dark, evil track straight from the bowels of hell itself with Dawn of the Black Light. And it's 4 minutes and 55 seconds of insane blasting black madness with nothing short of a machine gun attack on all the senses with the goal of complete and utter annihilation and destruction. The chainsaw flesh ripping riffs are ice cold, dark and destructive as it's intense maniacal drumming which never gets too technical or predictable which I love. No guys, this is war metal and it has a certain formula and recipe for its audience and people who seek out this kind of metal. So let's check out Dawn of the Black Light here on Music of Destruction. And guys, we are back, and this is easily my favorite song on the album. Where it does slow down and pace, it offers a very bone-chilling melody and nuances that I alluded to earlier that will have you head-banging while the music and lyrics and vocals get deep under your skin. This is another sick fucking song. Next up, we have Luciferian Darkness, and while it's another sonic war metal attack on everything that this world represents, as it merges itself with the dark forces of existence and plummets you deep into its black chasm 
of abysmal demise and evil that just never lets up until the ultimate goal is reached, which to me is exposing every Christian lie and deceit that was thrust upon the world to bewilder and brainwash everybody. That's ultimately the goal of this type of black metal, which is to expose and fully embrace blasphemy, darkness, and evil to oppose everything that Christianity holds sacred. And I mean, that's exactly what this album does. It turns it upside down and completely destroys the roots of its, of its very existence. Now, the riffing, drums, and bass, and vocals all play an integral role here in firmly, firmly establishing this kind of atmosphere and emotional provocation, because this is what black metal represents. Now, while there are many different genres of black metal, I wouldn't call this purely satanic black metal, because there's so many other themes and nuances within the music. Its framework is expanded upon with tales of blasphemy and perversion of the Christian doctrines and people's weak fascination with some savior in the sky that's going to come and save them. Again, this is another killer track, and its relentless blasting combined with doom-like repetition over pummeling double kicks make it another masterpiece. Desecration follows this formula, but again, it's not in the exact same vein as the aforementioned tracks, and this is where the album takes a bit of a different turn, but also remains remarkably similar in terms of its approach and songwriting, but at the same time, we get slower doom sections that are very reminiscent of an almost classical meets rock and roll type vibe that works very flawlessly to create a dynamic and sinister atmosphere within the black walls of its sheer morbid fascination with darkness and pure unadulterated evil, sorry. Now on the surface you might be thinking to yourself, is this just another run of the mill black metal band? Well, the truth is they aren't. And while I keep coming back to this point I made earlier, this is not gonna be for everyone. And I certainly wouldn't want it to be either because the tracks here all share a similarity of dark, hateful atmospheres of coldness, isolation, evil, darkness, and pure blasphemous obsession and it's not going to be an easily comprehensible listening experience for most of you out there unless you're already familiar with black metal but i have to ask then why are you even bothering with extreme metal to begin with and if you want it to be palatable and easily and understood and embraced then you're probably getting into the wrong genre of music no whore of bethlehem is abrasive chaotic hateful evil dark and downright savage and that's how i fucking love my metal and I'm not compromising this for any of you fucking shitcore fans out there who expect me to broaden my horizons because by the time I've gone through every fucking band and album I own, whether it's a ranking, a top 15, a review, or a metal album warfares, you're going to see just how broad my musical tastes really are. But I sure as hell am not going to fucking listen to Deathcore, so don't ask. The other three tracks on the album aren't any less compromising, palatable, or even remotely going to get you into this album unless you already love war metal. Because their similar approaches and structuring are all chaotic whirlwinds of insanity, bestial savagery, and pure fucking blackness that the common lax music lovers who adore bands like Signs of the Swarm or Suicide Silence are gonna shit their pants over because of how terrified they become when exposed to some real fucking music. The expressionism and passion on this record is undeniable and its impact on the world of extreme metal is absolutely monumental and something none of your shit core bands will ever fucking come close to achieving and Archgoat are one of the bands that will always have legendary status because of how impactful every one of their albums are and the band is as a whole period the final verdict for Archgoat's Whore of Bethlehem is a 10 out of 10 this is an absolute classic in the war metal genre and along with bands like Blasphemy and Bestial Warlust and Proclamation are some of the best in their respective crafts. Now as always guys, I sincerely hope you enjoyed tonight's premiere. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. You could join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash music of destruction. The seed episode number 32, the history of thrash metal part two is going up on Patreon. I'm still finishing it up. I got caught up with work and I took a break from YouTube, so I'm still working on that podcast. If you want to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash music of destruction, select the $5 tier, you'll get access. Also, my Teespring store, teespring.com forward slash music dash of dash destruction is open. You want to go check out all my merch. Going to be working on some new designs. As I said, I did take a break, so I didn't do anything new. I was also working my job, so, you know, stuff happens. Now, Colton James and myself, Still working on reviews on the run. We got our cameras, getting the lighting, all that great stuff 
It is taking some time. Uh, it's going to be great. We're also putting together a professional production for other projects we're working on. But uh, let's check out a clip of what you can expect from our movie and game review channel reviews on the market. Sorry, guys. Looks like I lost. There's no sign of him anywhere. And we're back. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share the video. Have a great night. We will see you for album ranking Wednesdays. Cheers. Have a great night, everybody.